Hey guys, um, thank you for joining me today. I know today is not Sunday, and I don't even know if I'm going to come on on Sunday. I was thinking about um, the sermon I would preach on Sunday, and then I, I felt like I really need to say something right now. And, um, so I'm doing Sunday sermon right now on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. And help me to say, say it the way you, the way you've said it to me and the way you've, um, Brought it about to me. Let Rachel die and, and Jesus live. Lord, let me just communicate it the way you gave it to me. This is so important. Uh, this is so real. And I think, not I think, I know that you have something in here. And I know I've been guilty of the issue too. And I think. And I know that you're going to speak to me and speak through me. God carry me through this discussion. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let it not come from a place of rebuke, but a, but a place of love and understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, I found one of the most hardest things about preaching is to convey what the Lord what the Lord is telling you. And so you'll see pre- preachers use examples. You'll see preachers get on stage and use different props and things because they're trying to explain concepts. Um, they start with the word usually, and then sometimes they uh, try and explain concepts using um, different things. Um, one one time. Uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick built a fence on built a fence on stage when he was talking about a, f- a fence and how being offended can build a fence between the couples. Uh, one time, um, Pastor Furtick used a a uh, flower pot when he talked when he t- when he talked about no he used a peach pit uh, and uh, his and he put his running shoes in a flower pot to il- illustrate um, how what when it's something we value we just um, there's a different weight to it, or something like that. And I remember Michael Todd. Um, oh, he's he's the king of using examples. Um, he ran on the treadmill one time to illustrate an example. I remember one time he took a blowtorch to, um, I think it was a box to explain um, sometimes when we come to Christ, we look all pretty, but beat us up a, up a bit, and we all, um, we all need Christ. So I've, I've seen uh, preachers use several examples through the years because it's hard to convey um, what God has um, telling you, what God has been telling you sometimes. 
and sometimes it's easier to use an example uh, from your life or from culture or from, uh, you know, uh, to make it relatable and and so people um, can relate to it, can understand what you're saying. So you kind of, one of the things about preaching is how can I marry biblical truth with cultural truth and illustrate the kingdom? I know for me, I used to use music and I still do as, as a certain, to a certain extent, but uh, because the YouTube rules, I can't do that anymore. But early on, I used to play a song and then um, bring about um, Kingdom Truth using that usually secular song. That's what God has given me because I'm a really uh, musical person. Uh, lately, however, I've seen this example thing go to a level of people, of where we um, call out different people, and I talked about a bit last week when I talked about the infiltration of light where I talked about we need to be careful when we when we call out uh, certain groups of people because um, certain mediums who will be stuck in that uh, l- lifestyle Um, because we don't know what they're going through. And we, I've, I've seen several Christian podcasts with people I respect and love dearly, um, do this. They would, they would call out a person and say, uh, say something that is true, um, that is very true. But in the back of my mind, I'm saying, first of all, I'm saying, what if this person were to see that clip of you saying that about their lives? you know, using them as an example. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't call out evil for evil, but I'm saying um, be careful about using people, even famous people, to illustrate your points. I've done this in the past. I've done this with Lady Gaga and and Dr. Phil, I've used them to illustrate a point and said, no shade on them, but, um, and lately that has um, begun to irk me a bit because it's, it, These people that are saying these things don't mean any harm to the person at all. Um, They're they're God-giving, God-loving people. But I'm saying, what? The internet world is so big. And I'm saying, what if they were to see you say that about their lifestyle? Like, or what they're going through, or things in media. You know, you say it's no shade to them. But if they were to see you 
would it be a shade to God? Because when we, we have to understand that we represent Christ in whatever we do. And like the internet is so big, if like who cares if it's a person who who admires that person and whatever, whatever, whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what if their assistant sees you and forwards it to them? What example would they get up get about the Lord with you speaking like that? With you calling like I I know what they're with you calling them out per se. What example forget about other people who love them and get mad and whatever, but what example would they get? How would they feel knowing that you are using them as a example of how not to be or whatever. And I'm not saying you're not right, but I'm saying, do we have to use people as examples? Um, Because um, I think there's a way to say things and a way to state things without putting people's lives on blast. And I think if we do that, we're just like the world. We're just like giving our opinions like a gossip show. Like any any gossip show that we watch, any like entertainment tonight or whatever, and we're couching it in this is the kingdom or what whatever we say. And I'm not saying that the points are not correct, but I'm saying these are people that God loves. These are people that he died for. And I'm not saying that I'm even fans of those people. Most of the people I heard about, I'm not fans of them. I'm not totally fans of them. But I just know that if I were those people, and I heard that, and I heard what these um, people said. It would it would cause me to pause <laughs> and um, just um, have a, a moment to say if if they're saying that about me. Um, and they reflect God, God must not think very much of me. (laughs) Um, I'm not saying that they do think like that, but I'm saying that we need to be careful. And I'm not saying you can't call out evil, but I'm saying, or you can't call out things wrong, but there's a way to do it so that you don't put people on blast. Um, a second thing is, these people that we're putting on, on blast are not even Christian people, or, or some of them are nominally Christian. Some of them believe in God, but don't have the relationship, don't have the understanding, don't have the um, don't have the uh, link to God that we do. So, if someone's walking in darkness and don't have the link to God that I do, don't have the relationship that I do, don't have the understanding of the Bible that I do. Why am I holding them to Christian standards? Why am I holding them to God's standards when they haven't come into the fullness and wholeness of the kingdom? 
why am I just saying no? Because we don't think of these people as walking. We don't think of celebrities as walking in darkness. But just because they're rich or whatever, or they say a few good things sometimes, doesn't mean they're not walking in darkness. They need Jesus like everyone else needs Jesus. Why are we using these people that don't know the Lord as examples? They don't know the Lord. They, they're, God never obligates somebody to his standard unless they're in the kingdom. And even then, he takes them through a process. So, so if you see someone, a celebrity, living together before they get married, why are you going to call that out when they're obviously walking in darkness? They obviously know about God, but don't have the relationship and understanding or are going through their process with the Lord. Why are we going to hold them to that standard? Um, I, or if somebody's uh, practicing some kind of wicked, uh, they're involved in uh, demon, demon worship or crystals or something, why are we going to hold them to Christian standards? Because they're, you know, rich and whatever. We cannot... But what we need to teach people is to discern the spirit. We don't need to teach them uh, not to go there, but we need to teach them to dis to discern the different spirits, to not follow follow certain people who are not walking in the light. We don't... These these celebrities, whoever they are, are not obligated to come up the Christian standards unless they're a part of the kingdom. Unless they've come into right relationship with Christ and, and even then they're going through their process. And you know what the funny thing is? Most of these people that we're talking about, they started in the church. They started with us, but because we didn't, we didn't hold them, we didn't love them, we didn't treat them the way they should have been treated, they went somewhere else. And now we're using them as examples? Now we're using them as examples of how not to be. And now we're shocked because um, one's into devil or people are into devil worship or, you know, you know, whatever. Because they came to us, but we didn't explain stuff. They didn't see Christ in us. And now we're using them as Examples of not to, how not to be? We need to understand that these people are just names to us, but to God, they're his lost children. They're his lost children, and they need Jesus just like we do. And, and there, there's a way to illustrate a point without putting a person on blast.
That's all I'm saying. Because when I look in the scriptures, Jesus never put anyone on blast. Even though he could have. He never put anyone on blast. And he and he was able to call things out. And he was able to illustrate his points and do examples and have a thriving ministry without using people. And I know, I know all of these uh, people that I'm talking about meant well. I know they didn't mean to hurt or whatever. And as I said, I've done it in the past too. But what I'm coming to now is these these celebrities, these famous people are not supposed to be examples for us, period. We need to find godly examples in our own lives to emulate and to look not look up to, to emulate and people of Christ. And we need to understand that these people are just like us. They're lost. They have heartbreaks. They have heartaches. And um, as I was watching one of these interviews, I said, we don't know what happened in that person's home for for them to have that opinion. We don't know what happened to that person for them to be drawn in like that to whatever worship they're, they're be, being drawn into. And I'm not saying to not call out evil or to just leave it as it is. Call out evil, but be careful of um, using a specific person. Remember that person is human. And remember that person needs the Lord just like you do. And remember that's a person that God loves. And don't don't do it because you're afraid that people will attack you. Do it because be careful because um, they're God's child. They're someone that God created, someone that God loves, someone that God's given gifts, and. He loves them just as much as he loves you. And he can save them just as much as he can save you. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.